Okay, as one movie is uploading and one is saving, I'm going to go ahead and show you my wing system that I just oh, I thought up. And it's nothing's new, but what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, cut a notch on the table saw for a sixteenth inch. leading edge. You, what the heck are you talking about? Well, I'll show you. First thing I need to do is get a center line on this. I've cut 13 blanks for this project. We should have these pinned together or something to hold them together. I'll get a clamp. together. Like I said, nothing, nothing is new. It's just different for me. Something I thought up. I don't even know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. I guess the biggest thing on when you're doing this is to make sure everything is uh, aligned. <clears throat> we don't want to build a warp into the wing, so check and double check. Not sure this would even matter, but uh, don't want to take any chances. So what I'm going to do next is, is I'm going to go to the table saw, and I'm going to cut a notch in the leading edge, and we're going to insert a piece of sixteenth to hold the leading edge straight. So. Let me set my saw. We're going to make that notch one half inch. Plenty. 
Okay. I know you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to notch this real quick. said a, a half and it ended up being more like a quarter for some reason. I don't know what happened there. Oh, I know what happened. Cut the wrong end. <laughs> That's alright. We, it's three-eighths, we want this high. I'm not as old as some of you guys, but I'm getting there, and it's getting old as BS. I can't see. Okay, what's that, what that's done is we've got a notch in the uh, leading edge of the uh, rib, and we're going to have a 16th inch piece sitting in there as to not let the leading edge scallop. It's a molded leading edge, and this will hold it from scalloping. It will also lock these ribs together. Yeah. Well, I'm working on it. And I made a notch in the back. It was a quarter inch. Not necessary, but... <coughs> That locks that together. Very nice. Take some sandpaper here and knock the edge off so I can lay it flat on the table. Okay. So now this stack is locked together. Let me take the clamps off of it. And we're going to drill our holes for the root and tip. Okay, but this is the leading edge, so it's going to be right here. It's going to start right there. I'm going to have to run over to uh, Lowe's and get some bolts to put this together. 
so we'll have to uh, stop the video. Okay, I've marked where the uh, where the rods are going to be drilled to go through. I already have an arrow shaft in the drill press that's the correct size. I'm going to run over to Lowe's and we're going to get some bolts. I'm going to need to drill some holes in the root and tip rib. It sure is a shame that, that I can't figure out how to make the jig. work so I don't have to hollow the ribs after I get them in but there's just no way with this jig that's the way it goes the root rib for this is 8th inch and the rest are 16th so we're going to build it in halves There's a picture of what the rib looks like. And this is the inboard side. I took the lightest pieces of wood I had and made the inboard rib set. Making sure to hold these at 45. Now this is probably rather boring. This. Uh, this video of what I'm doing here, but it, it is rather important if you don't have a CAD or a laser cutter or whatever. And I've always been a hands-on guy. I never, I've never had any money to to buy all these high-tech things. So I've had to do it myself. And really, it's unfortunate that it happened that way. Anyway, I want to go to Lowe's. I'll be back uh, when I get back with some bolts. We'll put these together, drill a couple holes on the drill press. Some quarter-inch holes on the drill press. We're going to need, uh, oh, that's what it was. I needed to measure this for the bolts and wing nuts I need. like inch and a half inch and a half threaded bolts so we'll see you in short well I made it to Lowe's and got me some bolts and uh, what I've done is I've stacked all the wood together I got some uh, wing nuts and some quarter inch bolts and we're going to trim them up on the uh, band saw and then I'm going to run them on the belt sander and we'll see how long it takes. I'm going to go ahead and leave the uh, camera run so you can see how long it takes to make a set of ribs. So here we go.
think I'll position the camera so you can see that I'm cutting these ribs. Now you're not going to be able to see much because I'll have my back to you, but uh, we're going to cut them and then we're going to sand them. Now these can be sanded by hand, but for speed, I've cut them close and we're going to belt sand them. So here we go. set of ribs we just finish them off with the uh, by hand when making stack sanded ribs the prep work takes longer than anything else aluminum. I guess aluminum or steel rib templates would be better. But as you can see the plywood 
suffice. One thing that did happen is when I cut that notch, it's uh, it's not straight, so I have to recut the the front notch. But uh, that's not a big deal. I can't tell you how many airplanes I built. Just like this, stack sanding ribs. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it looks pretty good. So there you have it. The stack sanded ribs. Now, I'll probably go over and uh, publish another video here because it's, it's finished. But when we come back, we'll go ahead and set up the uh, the wing, lay out the wing. <coughs> so I'll see you in a bit. Oh, I would like to state one thing you need to do is there's some marks on top of this where the spar layout is. You want to connect the dots. Because we're going to have to cut spar notches. And I may or may not have 3 sixteenths. So we may or may not be building a wing today. Just mark the uh, spar spots on top of the ribs, and when we take them apart, we're going to connect them together and then notch those out. So we'll be back uh, when I upload this other video. So I'll see you in a short. Well, I got the soles of my shoes glued back on with Gorilla Glue. That's some good stuff. <laughs> anyway, we got to kind of trudge on here with the ribs. Now I have the notches all marked. here but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it and I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to sand that notch in there. I'm going to make a tool to kind of sand the notch into it because I really want everything to fit perfect. So I'm going to put the rod in it. I think I need another rod. I'm not sure if this is 
same it is. These are aluminum arrow shafts. That I ended up getting from a friend of mine. And they're not really good as push rods. They're only good as tools. So yep, that'll hold it straight. So I'm gonna cut this off. Now it's not it's not good what I'm gonna do here. It kind of dulls the bandsaw, but are pinned. So we need to make, we need to figure out what size spar I'm going to use and make a tool, a slotting tool. So what are we going to do here? What are we going to use? Let's see what I have an abundance of here in my pile of junk. That's quarter inch. I'd really rather use 3 16 even if I have to go and buy some. Ah, oh, here's a piece of 3 16 Here we go. So what we need to do here is we need a piece of uh, 3 16 square. So I take my stripping tool. Set it at three sixteenths. We don't need it that long, so let's cut some of this off. I I like making these little tools for just about everything because there's no sense in doing it by eye or when you can do it with precision. That's not good. That was a hard piece of wood. There we go. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and uh, I'm going to stick it to this. Now I'm going to glue it with CA for the simple fact it's not going to stay on, only being 3 sixteenths of an inch. Next thing is to cut the sandpaper to the size. I'm going to use a metal straight edge because it will cut into the balsa wood and then you have a goopy notch. Okay, so now we have a 3 16 spar with a piece of sandpaper on it. A 
we'll go ahead and uh, glue that to this piece of wood here. So this is basically just like the uh, hinge notching tool, only we're going to use it to cut this notch for the spar. And then cut this off. And this piece gets glued on as a handle. piece gets glued on up here. So this is what we have here, simple notching tool. Now we're going to have to be careful, we don't want this notch to go all over the place so place it on our line and we'll rub it back and forth. Until it bottoms out and then we'll have a perfect Three sixteenths notch. When this wing goes together, it won't need any glue, it'll be held together with pressure because all the parts fit perfect. There's the notch and this piece fits perfectly in it. And that's how I cut the notches in it. 
It was real simple. You just got to think things through. <coughs> I could even do a trailing edge notch too. But then I would have to change my table. I'm not sure I want to do that. I can I can do that. Yeah. We don't need it. Okay, so let's put the wing get the wing set up to be well, I gotta mark them to be hollowed. So we're going to work on hollowing these ribs out. So we'll be back in a short when I get all these ribs hollowed. Probably won't be back today. It'll be tomorrow, day seven. Because like I said, I'm not really working real hard on this. I have days one through six up on the forum now. Uh, I'll start moving them over to Control Line Craftsman. I'll probably offer some plans for this airplane because I really expect this airplane is going to be really nice looking and it should fly very well because the other one flies very well. We'll see if I can't go to Kinko's and get some paper and draw them up and maybe send them to uh, John Miller and he can do some CAD on it or whatever. So we'll see you in a short. First part of this video is a shameless plug for one of our sponsors, Balsa USA. I needed some parts to uh, build this wing. I needed some sticks, so I went to my local hobby shop, which is Shaper's Hobby. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with Shaper's, but there's a whole lot right with Balsa USA. This piece of wood is 164th by 1 by 48. At Schaefer's Hobby, it's $53. At Balsa USA, the same exact piece of wood is 22 Of course, they're shipping, and they shipped it in a huge box. Uh, it was $10 shipping, but it ended up $35 with shipping. So $35 or $53, your choice. I suppose, you know, I could have done a lot better on the shipping, had I ordered something more than one sheet of, of this uh, 64th plywood. But I knew that I would need that, and I have some other wood, wood coming from Stunhanger Hobby. I also got a few pieces out of his whole rack. I got two pieces of wood that were acceptable, but not as good as Shaper's Hobby. I mean, uh, Stunhanger Hobby. So, I have my rib set made. I, I did get my, my uh, 3 16 square, which I was going to cut, but they, but they had some super straight pieces of light 3 16 I decided, you know what, it's a whole lot easier if they're already cut and straight, so I don't have to monkey with stripping the wood. So we're going to start to uh, get the first half of our wing laid out today. Uh, I'll reposition the camera and uh, clean up the bench and lay the jig up. And, uh, and we'll start doing this wing. Of course, I do, have to, I do have to hollow these ribs out yet. So it'll be a few minutes before I get those hollowed out. But I already have them marked, so it'll go quick. So... We'll be back when I get that done and we'll set up the wing. Well, we're on day eight and I'm still sanding ribs. I'm really not rushing this build. Fuselages together, elevator stabilizers done, and I'm finishing the outboard set of ribs. Now, I made one set. And these were 16th inch, and they didn't come out very good. <laughs> so, after screwing up my best 16th inch wood, what I thought was my best wood, 
I went into my stack of secondary wood and I got out the 77,000 material that I used to build thunderbolts and I and I'm telling you I still got a stockpile of it and this wood was it's probably six seventh eighth generation down from the very best but these 77,000 ribs set that I made here is lighter than this set so <clears throat> Let's go over the stack sanding process. First off, one of the problems I had with the other ribs is I really didn't pay attention to what I was doing. And I kind of got the holes in the wrong spot. And it's very important that you get your jig holes correct and you think out exactly how you're going to do the project. Because if you have holes, lightning holes, where, where the jig rod holes are, that's no good. <coughs> okay, so I first, first belt sanded these, and it took five minutes to belt sand them. I cut them on a bandsaw close to shape. And then... I cut the piece on a bandsaw, the whole stack, close to shape, and then put it on the belt sander and sand it down to the plywood template. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the center line at the, at the uh, leading edge. And not a big deal. Tre can't do the treading edges yet because I'll show you why. So I have them, uh, I have them sanded to shape. They're all correct size. We're going to undo them from the stack. We have to drill two more holes in them. These were the holes to to stack sand with, and now we're going to drill the jig holes. And how you do that is we move them down to the trailing edge. They were all pushed to the leading edge. I'm sure you could get away with setting it up to do it on the, to bolt them on the, on the back half. But then the problem is there's a, a really steep angle on the uh, rib and I just don't like that. So. I opted for this method. So now, let me make sure that's straight. That's straight. And then I put the clamp on. Actually, let's. Uh, Put the rib pattern on it. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this. This is just a, a fast, easy way that I found. And I've done it for years like this. And now we put a clamp on it because we're going to drill our jig holes. Yeah. I made a mistake. 
mistake again. Darn. Or did I? Well, I gotta figure this out, see if I made a mistake. Hope not, so be back in a minute. Well, I got it figured out. And I'm glad I stopped the camera and looked. I didn't make a mistake as far as drilling the holes go. What I did was, is I made a mistake on, I'm not using this pattern. The jig holes are put on with a different, with a different set of holes. I mean, it's entirely different, so. Phew. Man, almost lost it. I thought I would have ruined another set of ribs, but I didn't. Okay, so this was my hole jig. notice I have a whole bunch of holes in here because I, it, it's hard to figure out where you can drill these holes have have for the rod and uh, and still have lightning holes so with that figured out now we can clamp this together and we can drill our holes Take this plywood off the back because we're not going to be using that anymore. Is this the best way to do things? Probably not. Will it work? Most definitely. Now, when you're when you're drilling with this tube method that I'm going to show you. You want to make sure to have a backer. I forgot about that. Keep eyeballing things. Make sure they're straight. Okay. So how I'm drilling in order to get, you know, if you drill with a regular, a normal drill bit, these holes become just ridiculously ate up. So, I took a tube, an arrow shaft, like this. I skived the inside, and I put it in the drill press. Well, I figured, well... It's not quite clearing, so I took a Dremel chop saw, like so, and I cut a slot across the top. And what that does is clear it. However, what happens is, is when you're drilling down, the tube fills up and it starts mash mashing the wood inside. So you have to stop every quarter inch or so and push the... Uh, the slag, so to speak, up the tube. So you don't get a mashed uh, hole. You want to get a nice, clean hole. 
because this hole perfectly fits this rod. And if you have a sloppy hole, you'll have a crooked wing. So, I'll cut the camera, I'll drill these holes, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm setting up my jig. And I took my jig and I glued it to the glass top. And uh, we had to do rib spacing, seeing that I'm not working from plans. I'm just kind of working out of my head. I have to make some guidelines to keep the ribs square. So I took a square and uh, squared up the jig ends to the table. And we're going to have two inch spacing. Well, this wing is 26 and a half inches long. At two inch spacing, that leaves one extra rib or more space at the tip. Well, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is, now these are just reference marks because the way that this goes together, it will not work out <clears throat> like that because I'm going to take the root rib and slide it to the end. And, and I'm not going to go through all this right now because I still have to get her all set up. But we're going to slide this to the end. This one here is kind of stuck for some reason. Make sure this is going to work. There we go. And this this is just an approximate. I'll slide these ribs out. I still need to figure out where I want my landing gear and I have to make a, I'm not going to do like I did on the last one where I where I had to end up making the rib afterwards I'm going to go ahead and figure out how to uh, you know what ribs I want to use and make a plywood rib beforehand because that stuff afterwards is ridiculous We should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. No, we don't. We have 13 into 26. So, made a mistake already in math. Anyway, this kind of gives you an idea how I got to lay the thing out and figure it out. So, as soon as I figure this measurement up we'll be back okay we're still waiting on wood for the uh, molded leading edge but I, I do have the rib sets done and uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of tinkering in the shop just getting the parts prepared you know jigging it up and I routed the uh, trailing edge and let me show you what's going on here now depending on the focus of this camera, you see that the there's a quarter inch groove notched in that and it runs the whole length all the way out to the second rib from the end because we're going to end the flaps there. So I just set my trailing edge on the jig and we're going to pin this all together of course, it really doesn't need to be pinned, but because I'm, there are no plans, and we're kind of doing things by eye, I have to uh, figure out rib spacing because the inboard wing is a half inch longer. And to do that, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin a uh, piece of wood on the leading edge and we're going to slide the ribs until they just touch that piece of wood. That way the sheeting on the leading edge will mate up perfectly. Now this is one of the reasons why the lost foam system is so good because it gives you a perfect duplicate of the positive that the negative is. But we don't have that luxury. I don't have a foam wing or cradle here. So <clears throat> we're kind of doing it old school on how it was done when I first started building. And it's then, you know, there again, it's not that difficult. I have a rod jig. This is sold at Brodax. And I have it glued to the table. The, uh, the stands for it. The turning edge gets set up on a jig and I have figured all this out so that it would everything would be aligned perfectly and we're going to put that there and then I'm going to clamp it down with a clothespin and now <clears throat> our wing is perfectly straight. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to set the first rib. Hmm. I thought I had some uh, squares cut, some triangles, but maybe not. Here we are, I do. Okay, so our inboard panel is 26 and a half inches long, and we need to make sure. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue some wood some balsa wood stock onto this uh, jig mount so that I can pin the trailing edge. So I'll be back in a second after I cut a couple pieces of wood. Okay, let's talk about some simple tools. Once I got the spacing figured out, I needed a way to make sure that each rib was perfectly straight, uh, you know, at a 90 degrees to the trailing edge, and that they were perfectly spaced across the wing. So what I did was is I made up a jig and it's just a block of wood with a 90 degree on it so that it's uh, straight up and down. It's 90 degrees this, this way and this goes across and lays on the uh, on the front rod so that it's parallel. It holds the rib parallel all the way to the leading edge. So what I do is is I set the block in until it's up against the rod so we know that it's at a 90 degree to the rod. It's at a 90 degree to the table so the rib is in straight and we just hold it together and they're going to be spaced evenly all the way across and we'll do it. We'll use the block when I glue in the uh, top spar as well. And then just attack on the trailing edge. So, now it moved, but that's not a big deal because we're going to come back and use the block when we uh, <coughs> set the top spar in. So we have this one here. These ribs are two and one sixteenth apart. Um, 
and the other the outboard side will be two inches. Giving us the same amount of ribs with the extra inboard area. Why I'm showing you this, it's rather boring to watch me glue each rib in, but why I'm showing you this is that you need to make aids to make the job easier and more precise tools. Hopefully we can go and pick up our wood today. I'm not sure. It might be tomorrow before I get it. But if it's tomorrow, I'll have the, uh, the wing built. Now, we're not even a week into this project yet, as some may know. So there we have that. I'm going to go back and check all the ribs, make sure that I didn't miss any. I, I did miss one here. I think the most important thing, oh, I missed two, because this one moved over. The most important thing to do is would be to get the first rib square, because you're going to have stack tolerance, and you, you don't want that. And what that is, is a few thousands over a span of 26 inches can add up to a quarter inch. So... You want to make everything as accurate as possible. I'm going to get the square and I'm going to make sure that this first rib is 90 degrees to trailing edge, which it is. We'll go in and check all these before we glue this top spar on, but I want to get these last two ribs that I forgot to glue glued down. Why do I like scratch building? Well, first it lets me express my creativity. And second, it lets me do things the way that I want to do them. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut this piece off here, the tang off here, so it will clear the spar when I set it in. Because I don't want any interference from the spar because I want this look at that it fits absolutely perfectly across there there's no there's no uh, 
fidgeting or jiggering or anything like that. It just sat right down in there because we cut all the ribs, stack sanded together. They were all mated together. You look down the, the leading edge, it's a perfect straight line. You look down the trailing edge, it's a perfect straight line. So now, I think I'll cut the camera. I'm going to cut this piece off here so it will clear this spar and I'll show that. We want to make sure that it clears the spar because there's no need for it to be hung way out there. We just want to make sure that that they're in square and you need you don't need a foot to do that. You just need a few inches to make sure that it's going to be square. So let me mark this. Cut this off. Because this is going to remain constant on the other side. The other side is an exact copy of this side. can take this block in and out. Oh, got to get it started here. I can take this block in and out with the spar on it. And then we'll flip it over and put the spar on the other side. I think I can get it in and out. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> we want to take our square, make sure that our first, uh, the first rib, you want to check the whole distance, but setting up the first rib is probably the most important because everything's going to key off it. And I want to make sure that it's square to the trailing edge because the two halves that are going to be glued together. You want a straight trailing edge, okay? So that that was square. Now I'll drop the CA on the spar. We'll check the second rib, make sure it's in there square. It is. And drop the CA. But this is why <clears throat> one of the reasons that I can build so fast is that I used to, you know, jigs and tools to make sure things are perfect. Of course, like I've said in the past, I do spend the time in the shop. If you're going to build, you're going to build these, you're going to have to spend the time. Now we have a little problem here, we have a bind. So, somehow I've got this a few thousands off, so we'll cut that loose, which is not a big deal, it was just tacked. I see why. There we go. It will help having glue, being able to glue the spar in the same time. So, yep, it was a few thousands off. So I'm just going to go down the line and do this the whole distance to make sure they're all in there square. They all look square. And I want to make sure they're perpendicular to the uh, workbench and uh, the reason for that is is the sheeting. If you don't have the if you don't have the ribs perpendicular 
to the workbench, when you put the sheet cap on, there'll be just a few thousands uh, gap. And you either have to fill it with CA, so that means more weight, or you have to pull it down. And what that means is those hoop de doos that I'm trying to eliminate. So, one other way to do that would be to put a second spar in the middle of that, or half rip, but that's just more wood. So if you you build everything with precision, and it all fits together without having to pull it or twist it or anything, you get a much better bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on this. I'll show you when I flip it over and uh, glue the other side. So we'll be back in a bit.